We really need a female role for today's episode. Don't worry. I got it. No. We need someone else. Galage? Galage? Galage. Come, my lady, come, come, my lady, you're my butterfly, sugar, baby. Come, my lady, come, come, my lady, you're my butterfly, sugar, sugar. Live from Badger High School is IWS today! It's IWS today! Mr. Keeper! And starring Mr. Clock! Ladies and gentlemen, it's IWS Today! Now your hosts, Mr. Keeper and Mr. Plot. Good morning and happy Friday. I'm Mr. Kiefer. And I'm Mr. Plock, and this is IWS Today. Today, we're not in a country. We are at a historical era, reporting live from the French Revolution. Let's find out what happened. Thirty-seven years old, executed. The Queen of France, Marie Antoinette, is guillotined in July of 1793 during the French Revolution. Why did this happen? What caused this hatred? <laughs> Tonight we look at the most famous queen in French history, Marie Antoinette, on a historical dateline. Marie Antoinette married Louis XVI when she was only 15 years old. Jean René, French peasant, choosing to remain anonymous to protect his safety. The problem? She was a member of the Habsburg family. Wait, who, who controlled the Austrian Empire, a bitter rival of France. You said she's from what country? Pierre, another French peasant, also choosing to hide his identity. What's wrong with a nice French Catholic girl? Life as a public figure was not easy for Marie Antoinette. Her marriage was difficult, and she had very few official duties. She spent most of her time just trying to keep herself busy. On the palace grounds, her and her friends would dress in elaborate costumes and have tea parties. She was doing what? Widely circulated newspapers and inexpensive pamphlets poked fun at the Queen's prolific behavior and spread outlandish rumors about her. Before long, it had become fashionable to blame Marie Antoinette for all of France's problems. Ouch! My elbow! Dang you, Marie Antoinette! You guys, and then they gave me a Pepsi with three ice cubes and not four. Oh, I'm so rich. No, that's just not right! It was widely known in France that the queen liked to live a very lavish lifestyle and was not afraid of spending the French crown's money. Time for a little light shopping. Amazon.com and search. No, I Earrings? Why? Check. New dress? Absolutely. ATV? I'll take it. 
to. You never know when you might need this crystal goose. New girls for Louis? He'd look awesome in those. Oh yeah. Crystal goose? I was able to buy a turtle once. On the eve of the revolution, France's grain crop failed, causing the price of bread to skyrocket. Now, even though many people believe she did not actually mutter these words, some think that Marie Antoinette said the following. If there's no bread, let them eat cake. Does she not realize you need flour to make cake? I'm really more of a pie kind of guy. The people were so enraged by this alleged comment that a mob of women actually marched the 13 miles from Paris to the Palace of Versailles to protest and were even looking to kill the queen. Luckily, she was able to escape at the last second. Two years into the French Revolution, France is at war with Austria, the queen's home country. Yeah, Austria, that's my country. Anytime the war wasn't going well, People turn their blame towards the foreign-born queen. We lost another battle? How is that possible? The queen's telling them what we're doing! It's obvious! By August of 1792, a mob stormed the palace where the king and queen were staying and imprisoned them. By January of 1793, the king was executed. Nine months later, the queen received a similar fate. So there you have it, the controversial and misunderstood life of Marie Antoinette, guillotined at the age 37, caught up in the wild flames of the French Revolution. Classic example of wrong place, wrong time. See you next time on Historical Dateline. Hey, French Revolution! What's going on? The French Revolution started in 1789. Now, before the revolution, today, we refer to the government in place as the Old Regime. The Old Regime was broken up into three different estates in French society. The first estate was the clergy, second estate was the nobility, and third estate was everyone else. Now, even though the third estate had 97% of the population, they had no rights whatsoever. When the revolution was underway, France was turned into a constitutional monarchy. Louis XVI was forced to share power with the newly formed National Assembly. The constitutional monarchy failed, and Louis XVI was executed. In his place, a new government took hold in France called the National Convention, which was a republic. Now, one man named Maximilien Robespierre took over the National Convention and unleashed his infamous reign of terror. When the bloodshed became too much, Robespierre himself was executed and the National Convention collapsed. It was replaced by the Directory, which was very similar to the original National Assembly, however with a five-man executive body instead of one ruler in control. In 1799, the Directory was weak, in shambles, and very disliked by the people. One man, Napoleon Bonaparte, overthrew the Directory in a coup d'etat. Beginning with the title of First Consul, Napoleon began to conquer and take over all of French enemies. In 1804, Napoleon crowned himself as the Emperor of France, and by 1810, almost the entire European continent fell under his control. Over 30 years of conflict, bloodshed, and power changing hands, France was returned back to its original rulers for the time being bringing the French Revolution and Napoleonic era to an end. Now let's see what's going on with that culture guy. about really big influential people in our history. Do you ever wonder what it was like for the common person? 
Well, today in That Culture Guy, we're going to learn about the average person in the 17th and 18th century. Reading was very popular. In fact, the number one most read book was the Bible because religion was a huge part of everyday life. Ah, good. Genesis, Genesis. Man, this Bible really is a good read. Wonder if anyone else knows about it. Now, common people love their blood sports, which would be events such as bull baiting, cockfighting, and boxing. Basically anything that involved violence or bloodshed. Oh, oh. Time out! Champion of the world! They enjoyed going to festivals. The most famous one was Carnival. This was a few days in March, which was a wild release of drinking, masquerading, and dancing. Shot, shot, shot. The infant mortality rate was very high. One in every four children die before the age of 15. Therefore, parents would neglect their kids. That way, if the kids died, they did not have to have a deep emotional connection with their own children. Dad, 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 check this out, check this out. Look what I can do, look what I can do. It's so annoying. Taking a bath was not considered good by the people. Consequently, there was a real problem with lice and bugs infesting clothes. Hey, you ready for a bath? Yeah! Hey, hey! When someone got sick, they believed that it meant that that person was possessed by the devil. He's possessed! <laughs> the most common daily meal was bread with a side of soup. The average person ate about two pounds of bread each day. Guess what's for dinner? Bread again. For the first time, we saw a distinction between men's and women's clothing. Men would wear dark suits, while women would wear brightly colored dresses. All right, Louie, what are you wearing for your first day of school? Dude, that's a woman's dress. People typically waited until they were in their late 20s to get married. This was to make sure that they were financially independent and could move out on their own. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Leading up to the revolution, bread prices grew so high, a loaf of bread was equal to a week's wage. No way! Way! The storming of the Bastille prison, which officially started the revolution, is still celebrated in France today as its Independence Day on July 14th every summer. No way. Way! When the king and queen's popularity plummeted, they attempted to flee France. However, they were caught. How? They were recognized because Louis' face was on their gold coins. No way! Way. During the Reign of Terror, over 40,000 people were sent to the guillotine. No way. Way. Now, even though she never said, let them eat cake, Marie Antoinette's final words were, I'm sorry, said to her executioner for accidentally stepping on his foot. No way! Way. Now let's go live back to the classroom, room 133, the classroom of champions, to Mr. Plock for IWS Now. Thank you for watching today's program. We'll see you next Friday.